Good evening all. I hope everyone is well. Hey Josh. Hey Tim. How are we all? Standard Texan is in the house. <clears throat> hey Joe, how you doing? Long time no speak. Keeping well? Harriet, hi. How are you? Glad it all arrived safely. Very nice, uh, Yabo. Thank you. I did my best to um, take note of the things that you'd mentioned in the past few videos, and I tried to include the ones that I could. Well, I think I'm going to smoke a cigar now. Actually, I've been smoking pipes all day, so we go for a D4. it decides to focus. Too much going on in the background, that's the problem. And a cup of coffee, of course. Right, um, we'll give it another couple of minutes. We've got quite a long list of uh, stuff to get through, about 20 items. And um, some of them really quite rare, especially the accessories. which um, I've been sitting on for quite some time. I've been meaning to uh, get a sale done for a while, just never got around to it. So I finally uh, prepared the list today. I wasn't planning on doing the accessories, but i um, just going to do the pipes. But I decided I might as well. Some of the pipes you've seen before, so I thought of the uh, Switch it up a little bit and just put some stuff in that you haven't seen. Hey, Oki Piper, John, Cigar Rick. A little, little bit tight, this one. I'm going to use the um, perfect draw. Now, I don't know if you guys have seen this tool before. I've used it quite a few times. And I've got to be honest with you, whilst it sometimes marginally improves it, it very rarely completely changes the cigar into a good smokable cigar. I'm not trying to diss this, I'm not trying to say that it's no good, but what I've found for the most part is that the only good thing this is really good for, the only thing this is really good for is for a completely blocked cigar, where a cigar leaf has been folded over so there's no air passage. You pierce it with that, it opens it up. When you've got a very tight cigar, in other words, the air goes through, but it's scrunched together too tightly, this tool doesn't really solve it. It can ease it a little bit, but it doesn't really solve it because it's packed so tightly in there, you put it through, it will bring out a little bit of tobacco, but everything just expands again as you take it out and it squeezes squeeze it up. Um, if anything, you push that through a very, very heavily packed cigar and it will split the wrapper, if anything. So, whilst I do use it sometimes, um, somebody who's on the fence and not sure whether to buy it or not, I don't think it's going to completely metamorphosize a very tight cigar into a perfectly drawing cigar, as the name would suggest. So usually what I do is I start off by just going in a short way and slowly drawing it out. And it does bring leaf out, there's no question about it. It does take out a... Hey Jim. Let's go for a little bit more. It's important to keep it straight so you don't come out the side, obviously. You don't want to pierce the binder, certainly not the wrapper. I 
I don't think it's going to improve a great deal. It is smokable, so I'm going to continue with it. And then uh, we'll get the sale started. Peter's still could be luxury twist flake. That's a nice tobacco. I do have a little bit of that. Um, I got some from Four Noggins quite a while back. I think I've just got a couple of ounces. Probably got about one and a half ounces left. And I've actually got some vacuum sealed, maybe half a dozen flakes from probably about 20 years old, which I got in the Ezrati cell. Which I've not yet uh, plucked up the courage to. How the wind, uh, Tim? Uh, um, that and brown, brown Clooney, uh, or Hell of the Wind, um, I've been wanting to try. I've yet to try any of the Virginia Ford Rattray blends. I do want to try those. Um, well, a good place to start is Dunhill Flake. Nice, L tank, very nice. Oh, don't send me a tin. Tin, that's too generous. Just uh, something. Is it a flake or uh, is it rubbed out already? You don't have to send, but if you do want to send, it's just a couple of bowls worth, just to try it out. Alright, so, um, thank you, Tim. Full Virginia Flake is very nice. Um, I mentioned it in a, in a video recently after being so sort of uh, taken by McClellan Virginias it's nice to go back to a really pure uh, sort of quintessential flake like uh, full Virginia flake high tree um, recently I I, uh, I I had some full Virginia flake I think it was on Sunday or Monday I don't remember um, as I said it, it was really nice to come away from those spicy rich McClellan Virginias to a nice straightforward um, it's got you know full Virginia flake does need some age um, but it, it's really a very refined flake and if you can sit down and relax with it you can really get multi levels of flavors but in a very subtle way it's really not one that you want to smoke in the workshop I mean you can but I'm saying if you want to get the best out of it um, that, for me that's the best way to do it to sit in your armchair and or your rocking chair on the uh, on the porch and just Relax. Um, wow, Jim, that sounds cracking. That cracked ten of seven years for Virginia Flake. Enjoy it. Reiki who? When is my book for Virginia Flake from? Let's have a quick look. I know mine's quite recent. It's only a few months old. Okay. Are we all sitting comfortably? Then I think we should begin. Okay, so I've got a list here that I've got to work to. As you can see, it's quite a list. Good, about 20 odd items there. It's, an, it's surprising, Neo, how much aged tobacco you can get from your brick and mortar. Um, Sometimes they get them aged from the supplier, from a, a bunch of things that were sitting around. And sometimes, you know, when a, a brick and mortar has, a lot of times when they stock up their shelves, they have a row, say, imagine you've got a, a round tin. They'll stack them one behind the other. And then when a few tins go, they'll get another batch in and just put them in. And depending on the shop, sometimes they'll bring the older ones forward and, and sometimes they won't. And you'll have the odd one or two tins at the back always getting left there. And you can often get... You know, some really good buys 
um, and get some aged tobaccos that way and pay a normal price for it as well oh wow smoky mode that is awesome 17 year old very very nice which, uh, which blends have you got there did you get any mature Virginia because I'd be happy to do a trade on that very nice um, you know, I mean, that's how it used to be. Um, probably 10, 15 years ago, it was the standard practice for, certainly in England, I don't know about Europe, but certainly in England, um, tobacconist cigar shops, they would buy in stock and put it away for 10 years. They wouldn't sell it. And when you, because they, it was the norm, I mean, there wasn't such a panic to buy cigars as there is now because Cuba is so um, inconsistent in its produce that uh, you know the, the shops can't get it fast enough especially the limited editions um, they go like hotcakes but um, the way it used to be is if they would buy say a couple of hundred boxes of D4s which was uh, you know it's one of the most popular cigars in, uh, Cuban cigars in the world they would put them away and they would they, and there wouldn't be a panic over it there wouldn't be people coming into the shop and saying can you give me some cigars from under the table, some of the old stuff, some of the really good stuff? It didn't work like that. People just put it away, and they built it up over the years, starting maybe 100 years ago. So there was never a rush for it. Cigars that were on the shelf were always 8 to 10 years old, and that was the norm. And, why, and when people smoked a Cuban cigar and they had such a fantastic experience, it's because it had, it had age, and it was smoked at the right time. Nowadays, you go into a, a shop, in the UK certainly, Virtually every box will be within the last year. So if you if I go into JJ Fox's, the majority of the boxes will be from 2017, maybe 2016, and you have the odd box from 14 and 15. But generally speaking, the majority will be from 17 and maybe 16. But 17 will be the majority, um, and that's not near ready for smoking. You can enjoy them, and some of them are great straight off. But to get the best out of them, they've got to have age. Okay, now I think we should get on with the sale. So Smoky Mill was actually on before. We tried to do this um, video about an hour and a half ago, and um, it, we realised that it was too early, especially for the uh, US market. So markets, listen to me talking about the market, ridiculous. Um, I think these are from. I can't remember what the date is. I think they're 15, maybe 16, but they're smoking not bad. So this Wally Frank um, Smoky Mo is already reserved, so we don't need to talk about that. So the next one on the list is has been seen before, and don't get bored because there's some cracking stuff which you haven't seen before. But I've just I'm putting out the stuff which is still available from previous sales as well, so it's an up-to-date list. Um, this is um, the Stonecrest. Let me just move stuff out of the way because the camera is trying to focus on the background. There we are. Okay, so this is the stone crest with a silver band. This is um, one of the too much of the sales stick. I mean, the guys in America would probably know this, but this is a particularly nice example. I've uh, linked the 60 pounds for the stern crest. I will put a list in the bucket when I'm finished. Okay, the next um, is some tobacchiana, um, some rare vintage Dunhill desk lighters. These are a pair of tankard lighters by Dunhill. One of them is damaged, the handle. It doesn't affect the functionality of it. And you can get, um, if you buy the broken ones which are sold for spares and repairs, you can unscrew that and uh, as, as far as I know you can change that. But I don't want to um, stake a bet on it, it's, it's, you're buying it as it is. Um, so this is, you can see that it's downhill. These are from the 1950s um, and all the parts can be changed, the flint, the, the wick, and whatever it is, 
Um, basically, the way the motion works is you pull that back and that operates all that mechanism. And you can see the, the wick there and the flint feeds up with a spring like most lighters do. Um, these are vintage items. Again, I give no guarantees. Um, I have had this one working, um, but not at the moment. Whatever gas was in there is out and the flint has probably run, uh, worn out as well. So I haven't serviced them. Um, so it's basically as they are. Um, this one is exactly the same, just with the, the handle having broken off. Um, they're quite rare. You can see some old battered ones sometimes around, but these are in very, very nice polished condition. Um, and these are £140 for the pair. Um, so if you can repair that, I mean, these sell in this kind of condition, they're selling at around 150 sometimes 170 sometimes a bit less each. So I'm selling 140 for the pair. Um, next up is an Astley, which you have seen before. Um, this is the Sandblasted Dublin with a beautiful, craggy, deep ring grain on it. Very, very nice example. Smooth top, some bird eye on there. This is an Astley, and for my money, um, this is Astley's German Street. For my money, this is made by Ashton's. Um, uh, um, Astley pipes are generally made by Sheraton, Ashton's, and Dunhill. Sometimes other companies, but those are the main three. Um, and so, for my money, just looking at the style, uh, the cut of the stem. For my money, this is an Ashton made pipe. Beautiful pipe. And this one is £190. I brought it down, it was 220 originally in a previous sale. So it's 190 for the uh, Ashley. Um, when I've got finished going through the list, if you want to see any of them again, by all means, um, you can talk about each one and you can have a look at whichever ones you want. Um, the next one is the Ashley Cumberland Scoop, which as well has been seen before. A uh, very, very nice bent pipe, also an Ashley, and this one is £125, it's new unsmoked. By the way, the previous one is also unsmoked, I should have said that, it's, uh, it's new old stock basically. Beautiful, mint condition, 125 this one is. Next one is also an Ashley, which you have seen before. And this one is 225, a beautiful classic pot shape, and for my money this is a Dunhill. Um, this is um, a silver band engine turned by Les Wood, as you'd expect. Um, Ashley's German Street Cumberland stem, new unsmoked, well old stock unsmoked. And this one is 225, a stunning pipe, beautiful, beautiful pipe. Next up is the gold one, which you've also seen before. This is a, a really high-end pipe, also an Astley. For me, this is also a Dunhill. Um, but I couldn't guarantee that, but that's how I feel about it. I'm just looking at the way the stem, the diamond shank is cut. Um, for my money, this is a Dunhill. Um, beautiful grain. Nice bulldog shape. And this is obviously a very high end pipe, also unsmoked. Um, so this one is 395, and again. Um, this one retail nowadays, as a Dunhill, would be going for over a thousand pounds, I think. So, 395 for a rare pipe which can't be bought anymore. Okay, um, and now we're going to get into some of the vintage accessories. So, the first one is Quite a few, just gotta get to the right one. 
I've not seen one of these before, and I've not seen one again since I got it. I have looked for it. This is an iron corona pipe by Savinelli. Um, it's got the, it comes with the original box. Paperwork, instructions, warranty card. Um, I don't know if it's, I mean, I've certainly filled it and tried it to make sure it works. It looks like it's silver plated to me. Um, I don't know, maybe it's silver, but I wouldn't have thought so. It would have said sterling on it. So I'm going to say silver plated. It's one of these with a, a tamper. Still got the original sticker tobacco tamper premi tobacco, whatever that means. But it's just an indicator to show you where that is. Works. What it did before. There you go. Um, I don't know, it depends if it's something that you want to buy as a collector's item or if you want to actually use it, maybe it could be serviced, but it seems to work fine some of the time. Um, so a very nice collectible item in its original box. And this is eighty pounds. Next is um, a Wilkinson sword pipe tool, or smoker's knife, as it's called, in pristine condition. Very, very nice piece. It's got the odd little mark on it, but otherwise in fantastic condition. It's got a poker, <coughs> excuse me, and a knife which is actually very sharp. Um, a really nice piece. It's very sleek. It's really beautiful to look at, um, and you can obviously that's the tamper bit at the end. Um, a very nice, beautiful pocket uh, tool. Fifty-five pounds for that. Um, I, I don't know how old it is. Um, it's going to have some age in it, but I don't know how much. So that's fifty-five pounds. I've got the turning wheel on my screen. Is it, am I coming through okay? Could somebody just confirm that that's coming through okay? Can you guys hear me? Okay, thanks Josh. Thanks Harriet. I'm not sure why I'm getting the spinning wheel. I'm just going to refresh the screen. Okay. The next one is a Dunhill Cumberland cigarette or cheroot or cigarello holder. Also something which is quite rare. Um, to me this looks like it's been unused. It doesn't look like it's been used at all. There is a little bit of I think that's glue but uh, I can't be sure. It doesn't look used to me but again consider it a vintage collectible item as opposed to something which I'm going to guarantee. Uh, there's no bite marks or anything like that. Um, this is uh, 75. Quite a rare piece. Uh, next up is the Millville pipe, which um, I have shown before. This is a fisherman's pipe. You see the little silver ring. This is made by Les Wood, the silver ring, the silver band. It's a Millville. I've had it um, cleaned up by Ian Walker from Northern Briars. And um, you can see the, the little fish sort of logo engraving there. Some nice bird's eye there and some cross grain. Um, again, Millville's are very, very collectible, especially the fisherman ones. Um, I did have it at quite a bit more originally, but I'm putting it in at 70 at the moment, 70 pounds. Uh, okay, the next one is a beautiful Dunhill cherry wood. Beautiful grain, stunning ring grain here, mint condition, very, very clean top is nice and clean. There's darkened areas is not char, it's um it's just the colour of the briar. 
There you go, you can see it a bit better there. In very, very nice condition. Um, this has been smoked, but um, it's in mint condition. A beautiful pipe. Um, and this one is 250. Lightweight. Very, very good example of the cherry wood from Dunhill. Um, we'll talk about the pipes in detail if anybody wants to afterwards. This is the Peterson Club pipe from 2016 for the Pipe Club of London. I have shown this before. This one is 175 pounds and um, a very, very nice grainy piece of briar with the PCOL laser engraved on the bowl. Very, very nice pipe, silver, and you can see there. 2016, the Ferrolis Sterling Silver, as you'd expect from Peterson. And there's the Hallmark 925. So that's that one at 175. The price is, is higher than it would be to buy that shape, obviously, because it's a, a pipe club, a club pipe, and it can't be bought. Um, This next one is a Paul Menard pipe, Paul's pipe, one of his uh, leather bags with his button, and this is the Cutty. I don't know if I've shown this before as a pipe available for sale. I think I might have done once before. An absolutely stunning pipe. The only reason why I'm selling this pipe is because I can't convert it to 9mm. It's got a beautiful um, nylon um, Mortis and Tenon, or Doan, I think he calls it. Beautiful Cumberland stem made only as Paul does. Stunning, stunning work. Fantastic grain on the pipe. Beautiful bird's eye on the stomach. as light as a feather as well. A beautiful pipe. And this one is 250. Right, next up is a very rare Ronson Vera flame lighter. Now this one does need a little bit of work. There you see this is a brown buffalo calf and chrome. It's got the original sort of accessory, comes with a little brush and a instruction manual in there. Oh no, sorry, wrong one. Sorry, I've got two of these. I've put the wrong one in the wrong box. So that belongs with that box. This is pretty rare. I've not seen this before. This is it's got a buffalo hide um wrap around the chrome body and this one is obviously being used um, this needs a new flint um, and it needs something done either to get a new one of these uh, springs or to do something to this so uh, it catches it goes in but it doesn't stay in so anybody who's got some experience with these um, you know might be quite happy to do something with that and this one is 70 pounds um, this is, is really old, as you can see. Fading may occur. It's a nice piece of Tobekiana. And the next one, which is from that box, which is Premier Chromium Genuine Engine Turned and Black Enamel. This 
one is in fantastic, fantastic condition. I don't think it was used. It certainly wasn't a daily driver. Maybe it was used just as a, on the other occasion. Um, but it's in mint condition. Still got stickers on it. Fully operational. Works every time. Uh, this one is 115. 115 for a beautiful example of the very same lighter. Next up is a pipe which you have seen before. This is a Briarbird Albatross pot, and I brought this price right down as well. It didn't sell last time, so this is £65 for a Briarbird. Very nice pipe, sandblasted with a tortoise shell in very nice condition, it's really sharp the, the sandblast and there you can see the bird and the feather there which indicates that it's in the albatross range um, it's got the uh, nice craggy edge on the edge of the stem, on the shank so that's £65 we're actually going quite quickly, we're not too far off the end uh, then we have a Cuban Cigar Club pipe, which is £50. This is new unsmoked. Nice sand blast. Classic billiard. Very nice pipe. Smooth top. Unsmoked. It's a bargain of £50. Next up we have the Edwards Cumberland which you've seen before. This is a pipe I bought from Joe Case, one of his own pipes. A uh, nice interesting rustication there, mint condition. I had Ian Walker making a new stem, Cumberland stem, genuine Cumberland. And this one is £70. I mean the stem alone cost me £30, so um, it's a great deal. It's a lovely pipe, smokes fantastically well, in mint condition. Next up is the Scott Hudson, which you've seen as well in the past. This was a custom pipe I had ordered really very early on in my smoking, um, but I can't really convert it, so it comes with a tamper. It's got some really nice uh, boxwood and exotic wood accents, some ebony in there, um, a brass ring, and it's been uh, made with a matching tamper. Very, very lovely set. Um, this is less than I paid for it. It's £190 with a very nice embroidered bag. I haven't really showed it to you well enough, have I? This is logo at the bottom there. Beautiful pipe, classic uh, Scott Hudson rustication there. Beautifully made. Smooth as a baby's bottom there, inside there. Alright, I'm going to take a, a drag of my coffee because it's getting cold. Cigar's gone out, of course, talking too much. Next one is a Boswell. I don't think I've showed this before. Um, this is a cherry, I call it a cherry dog. Cherry because of the colour and it's a bulldog. Again, this, this was one of uh, my favourite pipes, but I uh, didn't smoke it much, as much as I would like rather. Can't convert it. Um, a very, very nice pipe. It's got some nice green. Got some bird's eye there, I don't know if it's sharp enough for you to see it. There you go. It's a lovely pipe, smokes very well. And this one's a hundred pounds. Um the next one is a pipe which I bought recently. Haven't smoked it much. This is a Winslow faceted freehand. And every direction you look at it it looks different. Glorious pipe. Very nice green, flat at the top, very, very lightly smoked. Um, this one is 
10 pounds which is less than they sell for but it's, obviously it has been used a little bit um, so 110 pounds for the Winslow freehand very nice pipe, it's got a nice size bowl it's quite a narrow long bowl so it should be ideal for flakes so that's 110 um, next up is a pipe I have not put on for sale before, it's a stunner, absolute stunner, the Northern Briar. Um I can't convert this because the shank is too narrow, but I've kept it because I just love the look of it. This is a custom order that I had made by Ian Walker, beautiful grain on the stummel, look at that grain all the way around bird eye on the top Cumberland stem, sterling silver bands that's just the patina that can polish out if you want to absolute stunning pipe comes with a leather bag and this one is a 175 it's a little bit more than, than um, it cost me originally but um, Nowadays, if you want to order a custom pipe from him, you'd have to wait some months to get it, and it's up to you. It, it, um, it's, it happens to be an exceptional uh, piece of briar as well, which you can't always know what you're going to get when you order um, from Ian. Um, next up is also a recent purchase. Well, a recent, reasonably recent. It's a, a Passator scoop, or a, I don't know what you'd call it. It's, it's a freehand. Um, this is a 9mm, and it's got some lovely grain. Very, very nice pipe. Beautiful swirly stem. Lovely grain on the top there. Very, very, very nice condition. And this one is £90. Very, very nice pipe. Okay, two more items to go. Um, this is a Sarum made in Japan vintage lighter. It's a piezo. Beautiful piece. It's got a nice uh, feel to it, a nice solid feel to it. It's a pipe lighter, as opposed to a regular lighter. So that's Sarum Japan. Beautiful lighter, lights every time. Very, very nice piece. It's got a, some kind of engraving design on it. Um, and this is just £60. Beautiful pipe. And the final item is a Merriman lighter, which is the same as the one I use, but in better condition. I basically got two of these and kept one to use, so that's a bit battered, but this one is in very, very nice condition. So it comes with the original instructions, guarantee card, and what is really nice is just to see the provenance of this pipe. This was bought on the 16th of June 1979 in Bath. So it's a vintage lighter, but barely used. Comes it's in the original box. It's got one or two little nicks on it, but overall in very, very nice condition. Maraman made in Japan. Quite sought after. Very nice action on these. Probably my most reliable pipe. Sorry, most reliable lighter, the one which is exactly the same, the one that I use. I don't take it with me when I go out simply because I don't want anything to happen to it, but it, it stays on my desk and I use it virtually every day. So that concludes the list, people. The floor is open for chat. If you want to see any of the things again, feel free. I'm going to light up my cigar. So hi everybody. What have we been up to? Is anybody still there? <laughs> have you all fallen asleep?
Oh, well spotted, uh, Quaker. Sixty-five pounds. Hmm. No, he's off already. He's off. Um, I think 65 is a good price considering it's, it's fully boxed with the outer sleeve as well. Um, so I think I'll, I'll stick at 65. It's one of the more reasonably priced items along here, so I don't think it needs to be reduced really. No disrespect. Oh, I see. Right, no. No, it's 65. Um, the pipe papers, um, I don't know, because I don't know what they're made of. I'd have to really do some more research. I don't know what's in them. I don't know if there's any chemicals in them. And as somebody said, that, um, well, you're sticking tobacco and smoke in your mouth, so it can't be much worse to smoke it with this. But, you know, you just never know. You just never know. Um, so I've got to do a little bit of research and see if there's anything in there other than just a piece of paper to hold it all together but I would imagine that there is some kind of retardant in there um, to hold it and, and uh, I don't know I have to um, I'd have to do some research but I'd be more than happy to do a, a review of it but I'd have to I'd have to do a little bit more research on it Hi Art the last uh, lighter which is this one and the last Pipe, which was the Passator Scoop at £90. So that's going to Art. Thank you very much, Art. They're yours. Asbestos, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, let me just go back at your message, Harriet. There was a pipe halfway through that you didn't price. There was a large one like it just before you showed it. Sorry, I can't remember the maker. Um, it had a pit-like shape. Um, did you mean this one? Pot. Oh, the Astley one. This one? Right. Yeah, this is the Astley, which in, I feel is made by Dunhill. Um, this one was 225. I'll take an offer, Harriet, if you're interested in it. Um, you might be thinking of uh, the this one, which was a lot cheaper. Um, the Bride Bird. Is it this one? This one is 65.
how you've been doing, Art. I see you're still punching out the videos on a regular basis. I like all your experiments. Very interesting. Anybody else interested in any of the other tabakiana that we show today? Pipes, accessories, lighters? Truth is, a lot of it should go on eBay. Um, they just take so much time. Um, but I guess some of this stuff is going to have to go on eBay. Well, art is very quick up the mark. Quaker, of course. Truth is, I originally, originally bought this one to convert it. will convert it. It's got enough girth on it, but I'm quite happy to sell it if somebody wants it. Thanks, Mick. Appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, they are some of them are quite expensive because they they are some of them really quite rare. Um, it's, it's you know a lot of them won't be your everyday uh, smoke packs, but um, just a nice bit of uh, collectible items. And some of them are, are regular pipes like um, the Pastel, the Cuban Cigar Club pipe, uh, the Briarbird, the Edwards pipe. No problem, Harriet. Keep well. I would say this could be converted. There's enough uh, girth there, especially with the metal ring. This could be converted if you're into that kind of thing. Uh, art. Well, that's uh, quite a rare piece. And well priced. Yeah, I agree with you, Josh. That um, cutty from Paul's Pipes, um, if it wouldn't have that nylon insert, I'd convert that lacquer shop. That's, that's right up my alley at the moment, um, that that shape. Straight billiard-esque. Okay, it's a cutty because it's canted, but in principle, it's, it's um, the craftsmanship, the, the, the mechanics of it is, is billiard. Um, and that's really right up my uh, alley at the moment. It's, it, there's a type of, I'm going for as near as possible to straight pipes. I 
I mean, I have got some bent pipes. It's not to say that I won't ever smoke a bent pipe, but <coughs> I'm just liking the way they smoke. I wasn't too minds whether to put the um, the uh, Soren Refberg pipe in this one, but um, I've, I've been try trying to bend its will to my will in terms of flavours, um, and I'm still in the middle of that. So, but I just like the look of it, the shape of it. Um, I love that boxwood insert. So I decided not to on this occasion. So do you guys, uh, Americans, enjoy the Nottingham Pipe Show videos that are out there? Not just mine, but there's others, quite a few videos out now. I think there's uh, at least three or four. I mean, there may be some that I haven't seen. Well, at least you'd have something to be grumpy about. You live up to your name. Um, hi, Zila. A watch. Just teasing. Um, you'll have to uh, go back when this video finishes, uh, the live video, and go back. We've already gone through all the itinerary. Um, and it took uh, probably about 20 minutes to get through it, so we're not going to go through it again. Um, but I think you can go back and, and watch it whilst we're still on, I think. I've not tried that myself. Yes, you can. I've just tried that myself. Um, yeah, just go back and you'll you'll be able to see the stuff that's uh, available. I haven't watched that one out. No, which uh, which pipe was it? What make was it? I take it that you're, uh, you showed a lot of moisture coming out of it then, I assume, if that's why you're mentioning it. It is amazing how much, tobacco, how much moisture tobacco does absorb. Um, there are some, I have seen some uh, companies talk about their tobacco having 30 to 40 percent humidity um, in the weight, which is mind-boggling, really. So, if, you know, you get a 50-gram tin of tobacco, and uh, in reality, it's only about 30 grams. Which I think with certain companies, 
um, that's quite uh, can make quite a difference. Like Samuel Goweth, Goweth Hogger, you know, their tobaccos are traditionally very very wet, and those could be as much as 50% uh, humidity. Which tobacco did you try it with, Art? Or did you do several? Are you still on? Dear Josh, thanks very much. Uh, Tree, I'm, I'm going to be sending you some tobacco. Um, I'm going to be sending you these two tins, this one which you liked very much um, and this one which I got from uh, Kenny um, those are going out to you at some point I'm not sure when yet, you know, get to the post office um, <coughs> if there's anything else that you particularly want, let me know A scoop. It's there if you want it. All oh, right, what age is your uh, ten? I was wondering about the, your reaction when you smelled it the first time and uh, why, why uh, your reaction was so emphatic because obviously you've got something to compare it to I haven't smoked it before myself Oh right, it's the same stuff <laughs> Cool, well I'll, I'm going to send you the rest of it people I'm uh, available as you know on my email address so if any of you guys are interested just shoot me an email preferably not on YouTube I think that's all going away anyway YouTube messaging I'll put my email address in just in case you don't have it there you go so I'll put a, a list of the pipes in the bucket once we get off and um, yeah, hopefully one or two of you may well decide to go for one of the pipes or more and 
Let's see how we go. Thanks very much, everybody, for watching. I will do art. So, thank you, Art. Tree, Jim, Josh, Mick, Zila, Quaker, Tim, Harriet, who's gone, Boris, if you're still there, Pipeman, 1958. Thanks, everybody, for joining. And I will catch you on the very next one. You have a wonderful evening, what's left of it? Nighty night.